Hello there, this is Kate Amadeo and welcome to this week's time lapse. In this video, I wanted to show you how I created these beautiful lemons and it's a drawing that I drew from life, but you can also find the reference photo on my Patreon. You can download it for free from there and you can also follow me step by step if you like. So this is a tutorial that I recorded for my Patreon and you can also find the full version of this tutorial on my website so you can buy it from there as well. But I just wanted to comment a bit on the process that I'm kind of going through here and you can see me that I'm using Cansomitant paper. I actually chose this greenish color so it's a greenish gray because I saw a lot of greens in my lemons and I also wanted to show it kind of portray it in the background as I will not be covering the background completely and I'm using the reverse side of the paper it means that this side doesn't have the honeycomb texture to it it's smoother than the front side of this paper and it allows you to add more details then um, I also go through the selection of pastels and I have the same color paper so that I can see how these pastels look on this kind of um, colored paper and I'm testing them out on a separate sheet before I apply them to my lemons. So I'm choosing my palette up front and then I start working from there. And for the lemons I used a selection of greens and yellows because one of the lemons is greener than the other one and I wanted to create cool lights and warm shadows. So this is the basic principle of shadow and light theory where you use opposite temperatures for both. As I had the light shining on my lemons from a window, the light was cool in color and the shadows also, the reflections of the lemons, the yellow reflecting in the shadows, they are a lot warmer. I also go through kind of adding that shine to the lemons in this tutorial. So we will be adding the yellows into the background and into the color of the shadows and this way we will show that the lemons they actually cast their own light reflected light which are which is quite bright which is yellow onto the surface of the paper and I am applying the first layer all over my drawing so I'm working all over the drawing surface with underpainting, let's call it that. Um, so I'm just applying those, establishing those most important values and just to see if they work together or not. When you are working on a larger piece, it's always a good idea not to work on one item at a time, but to work on your image as a whole. That way you will be able to keep it more harmonious and it's not going to seem as if you just copy pasted all the objects on top of that drawing surface. And then when I have my most important values established, I am adding more details and I start with the object that is further back and that's the lemon that is on the left. And I'm adding yellows and greens, um, mixing them together. And also a very important role here is going to have the paper texture. Even though this is the smooth side, it still has a bit of a texture to it. So it's going to allow me to portray that texture of lemons. I have also blocked in the leaves, which are a secondary element in this drawing. And also I wanted to, to talk a bit about the composition here. I placed the leaves in such a way on purpose so that your eye as a viewer can trace um, the position of the branch that kind of leads you towards the center of the image, passing through one lemon, then um, circling around in the leaves that are on the right and then returning back to the lemons in the center. So there is an idea about the composition here as well. And I talk about, about it a bit more in the tutorial. And you can also see that in the shadows, I am adding the reds, which are mostly brick red even. So I'm making these shadows quite warm and I'm blending them out into the color of the paper so that they gently kind of fade out. Again, I'm using the colors that I used in my lemon on the colors of the leaves so that my image seems consistent and I'm adding lights and shadows to the leaves as well. One important thing is to pay attention where your leaves actually touch the table. So I slightly changed the position of the leaf on the left so that it touches the table and it's a bit closer to my lemon and 
slightly upright. So it just very, very few. It differs from the composition that I have in front of me. And the places that the object actually touches the paper, it creates the shadows, which are darker. So the spot where the object touches the surface creates an occlusion shadow, which is always going to be the darkest place in your shadow. And it's very important to notice these areas. And if you are about to change your composition, as I did slightly here, as I moved the leaf slightly more vertically, I decided that I want the tip of the leaf to actually touch the paper. And that's why I intensified the shadow there. And this kind of grounds that tip of the leaf and shows that it's touching the paper there. And I'm working on the leaves. And another great tip that I can give you is try to use color shapers or paper stumps when you have those tricky little areas where you don't manage to blend with your finger. So be careful not to over blend, but sometimes it's really useful to have such a tool. Even if you have only one color shaper or maybe just one um, paper stump, it's very useful sometimes. I'm adding also shadows on the leaves and here an important thing to notice is the reflected light that's kind of cast from the lemons. So the leaves, even in the shadows, they have some reflected light and it's going to be quite bright in color, as in it's going to be quite yellow and warm because the lemons are yellow. and. When objects are near each other, especially such bright colors as yellow, they're going to reflect in the color of the objects that are near them. And now I'm working on the segments of the lemon. So a trick when you're doing a fruit such as a lemon or maybe an orange or a mandarin, if it's cut in these slices, um, round slices, where you see the segments, is to create the under layer of that uh, juicy pulp first and then over the top add the uh, segments so that way you will have a more realistic lemon and here i'm also adding that bright yellow into the shadow even though this um, circle of lemon is casting a shadow onto the lemon that's behind it there in life as i try to work from life uh, now more often than not and sometimes in photography you don't see these small nuances but i could see a very strong yellow um, reflected light and also another thing to take into consideration is that peel of fruit very often is quite translucent it, and it lets the light through so in the tutorial i go a bit more about how to create that translucent um, feel of the peel so you apply more than one color, basically. You go through more saturated colors and then into the lightest ones on the rims of the fruit. And here on the leaf, you can see that beautiful um, yellow reflection. So it's quite warm, the light that kind of bounces off the lemon and is cast onto the leaf. And the same thing I also do in the background. So the surface, the plane where my lemon kind of stands on, it casts a very beautiful yellow light onto the shadow area as well. And basically this is it. As I said, you can watch this tutorial on my Patreon or you can buy it also from my website. And when you buy it off my website, you automatically get a critique of your work. So if you're interested, do check it out. I will leave all the links under the description of this video. And for now, I have to say thank you for watching and I will see you in the future tutorials. Thank you. Bye.